Hello guys, so I'm about to start dismantling the back end to prepare for the swing arm fix. I've ordered the new spindle and the swing arm kit from Old Brits and also the split collars from Windy from the Access Norton forum website and I'll include links to those in my description of this video and then uh, the follow up videos when I actually get down to replacing everything. What I'm trying to show you here is that uh, this being a Mark II A model, um, it has the essentially the Mark III uh, swing arm um, bushes and these Welch caps as well at the end of the swing arm. So you see those, they're just like a cap that were, they're concave. And, um, and thanks to Fred and Ella Eaton at Old Brits for their great technical instructions. Uh, they, these used to be installed by first putting the, the concave cap into the swing arm and then giving it a crack with a hammer to straighten it out which would then push the outer uh, diameter of this um, spacer into the recess and sealing it. So it has a combination of Mark II and Mark III uh, design components. So these are the Mark III uh, Welch caps, but then on the inside, it's just a single uh, locking bolt on the swing arm, um, whereas the Mark III uh, has the two cotter pins, and I'll, I'll show you that in just a sec. Yeah, it's a little grimy in there, and I'll clean that all up as um, I start taking things apart, but you'll see right in the center there of the frame, there's just a single nut, uh, a locking nut, I guess, across that cradle bar, whereas I believe the Mark III has two uh, cotter pin type pins that uh, try and hold that uh, spindle uh, tighter. I'm very grateful to Fred and Ella Eaton for those technical features on the Old Brit sites. They, they were great. Um, I'm hoping to follow those instructions as I start removing uh, all this uh, swing arm. And so um, we'll, we'll record it as we go. I uh, should have some friends coming along on April the 1st, so that, sh that should be interesting. See how much we can actually accomplish with 12 guys in the garage. But uh, yeah, it should be fun. I'm going to start by just removing some of the extra components that might get in the way as we're doing this disassembly or the reassembly. So I'll just start with the seat. Incidentally, I have fitted the Mark III tool tray onto this bike because uh, with the Mark II, uh, you'll see that the battery, I don't know if you can see it in there, but the battery is actually along the uh, along the frame so perpendicular to to the wheels and so there's very little room in there in which to put a tool kit so I, I've just put a little tray on there and sort of cable tied it to the frame and and the seat itself holds it down so it's a nice little extra storage compartment. Next we're going to remove the rear wheel and this is a two-part axle um, the longer side here on the right hand side and then on the left hand side we've got what they call the stub axle it's just a little shorty axle that the this side of the axle threads into sort of screws into and the reason for that is the stub axle acts sort of independent to this main axle it holds the uh, the chain drive uh, cog on onto the swing arm so that you can remove the wheel uh, to change a tire for example without actually having to remove the chain and the cog but uh, in this case we're going to remove everything. Just going to start by loosening off these adjuster screws here uh, otherwise they sort of drag here on on your nuts <laughs> as you remove uh, as you remove them from uh, the bike especially as you start Un, uh, untightening these as you slacken these off if these adjusters are too tight which they usually are over time as the wheel moves forward against them and um, they can leave a groove here and it just kind of spoils it and scratches it all up so I'll slacken these off I'm not sure if this is the correct size but uh, it's a funny little size I think it's a half inch SAE um, a 13 millimeter socket seemed to do the trick as well but it was a little slack so just slacken off the adjuster so that and then push it in because I'll be um, 
I'll be resetting these when I put the wheel back on because um, thanks to um, someone who responded to my YouTube video, they'd, they'd picked out that my chain is too slack. So thanks for that, I appreciate it. So that just eases it off so that the, um, the axle nut can come off. And then here on the left hand side of the bike, I'm just going to remove this uh, brake cable by, uh, re by slackening off this adjuster nut here um, that will give enough slack in the cable to allow that uh, trunnion or the cable to go past the trunnion and, and release. Don't you just love that word trunnion? So uh, you can see there, just like a regular cable, the nipple of that cable should go beyond that recess in the trunnion and allow it to uh, come off that will allow this whole mechanism to be released. And again, I'll be tightening this up again appropriately when the wheel goes back on and readjust the brakes when everything goes back together again. I just put a little bit of rubber tube on there just to protect knocks and dings. So hopefully that's enough slack now. Let me just. I'm lifting the brake pedal there. Just get more slack, and there you see it releases. And grab your trunnion before it drops. Okay. That's the brake mechanism released and my pedal has just dropped there um, one of these days I'm going to get one of those safety springs that um, prevents that from happening if your cable snaps it's like one of these brake springs here um, but it fits around your foot pedal mechanism and stops your pedal from just dropping if anything untoward happens while you're out on the ride so I'll just let this hang for now, but um, what I might do is when I've got everything apart and off, I'll um, inspect this, clean it all up. Um, obviously, I'm going to have a look at my brake pads as well when I get the wheel off. So now to remove the axle, uh, starting here on the left hand side with the stub axle. And this is a half inch Whitworth's uh, socket fitting. Um, I'm just using a, an adjustable wrench spanner on the other side. As I mentioned earlier, they're actually independent of one another. Uh, this is the longer axle here on the right hand side. It was a little tight. That would be all the more harder as well with those adjusters locking down on them as well. When I first got this bike, the axle had sort of bonded itself together and we ended up cutting the axle off with a hacksaw of all things. It did it as well, it was amazing. Uh, I thought it would be much harder metal but it, it worked just fine. A little Stanley hacksaw blade and we took it in turns to cut the, cut the rear axle off. It was a, that was a tech day so hopefully we won't be using uh, hacksaws and hammers when we come to do this swing arm conversion. One thing I do need to do before I get much further is uh, remove the nut here um, from the sleeve of this uh, speedo drive here on the rear wheel. And this is a 5 16 Whitworths. So here I'm just jiggling the speedo cable with my right hand as I unscrew with my left hand. Uh, to remove that nut off the thread and then just pushing the speedo back to release the cable um, and you'll see that's that square head profile of the speedo cable that fits into the gear mechanism in the speedo drive and then removing the rear axle from the right and actually the wheel holds on because it's still connected to the hub 
and then removing the spacer and again the wheel's still still connected but I'm holding it off to one side to the left just to make sure that it doesn't drop and then removing the speedo drive and then I'm just pulling the wheel off from the left to the right to kind of release it from the uh, the pins in the hub and it drops down and then I remove it from the frame from the swing arm and I just thought I'd give you a quick look at the bike uh, just to see what it looks like so far there's the hub still attached I'll remove that in a minute those are the three pins that were holding the wheel off and now we're getting a quick sneak preview of what it looks like inside the swing arm 